Hey, what's going on guys? JMac here. So today we're going to go over the Carnival Witch Doctor in patch 2.3. Now keep in mind this is the PTR, so everything that you see here is subject to change. And if there's some balance changes or patches later on that affect the Carnival Doctor, then uh, look out for some coverage of that on the channel at some point in time. But we're going to go over the Kanai's Q powers, the abilities, the gear, and the Paragon levels, and all that good stuff. And then we'll showcase a rift just so you guys can see the gameplay and how crazy the numbers are currently especially with the Kanai's cube introduction let's get right into it with the abilities so first off we have poison dart snake to the face which is pretty much the standard poison dart the majority of players run and uh, it just gives you a lot of crowd control and the more attack speed you have the more that you're stunning enemies and on top of that it's an aoe stun with the dagger of darts and in this particular build with the Kanai's Cube, we're going to have permanent Big Bad Voodoo, so even more attack speed for more stuns. We're running Grasp of the Dead, Desperate Grasp to proc our six-piece Zuni. There's a lot of different things that you can run here. It's up to really personal preference. If I had a Hellfire Amulet that was well rolled, I would run Death is Life here instead. And then I would probably have Grave Injustice and Gruesome Feast which currently I'm just running Grave Injustice, so it's really dependent. Um, I feel like if you're going to run Death is Life, you need to be running Grave Injustice to reduce the cooldown a little bit more instead of having the 6 second Desperate Grasp, but then to really utilize Death is Life, you need Gruesome Feast. So you kind of need the Hellfire Amulet to really make that work. But Grasp of the Dead definitely gets the job done. It also procs Bane of the Trapped. Big Bad Voodoo Slam Dance. Again, we're going to be cubing our SMK, so we're going to have permanent Slam Dance. Spirit Walk Jaunt, more movement speed and get us out of bad situations. Piranha's Paranado to pull everything together. If you're running an S of Johan, this may not be necessary, but again, getting a well-rolled S of Johan's pretty tough. And this pulls everything together nicely. You can also run Frozen Piranhas here, which Frozen Piranhas has the added benefit of being a low cooldown spell and it procs your Bane of the Trapped. Fetish Army Legion of Daggers, this gives us 8 fetishes, all shooting darts. Spirit Vessel for a second life, Pierce the Veil for more damage, Fetish Sycophants for 15 more dagger wielding fetishes, and then again like I said before Grave Injustice here to reduce the cooldown of our spells. You could definitely run Gruesome Feast instead, and again if you have the Hellfire Amulet, definitely try to run both if you can. So again the two abilities that will be proccing our 6 piece Zuni are Grasp of the Dead, Desperate Grasp, and Piranha's Perinado in this particular build. Next up we have the Kanai's Cube and Gearing. Now if you're unfamiliar with how the Kanai's Cube works in patch 2.3, I have a Kanai's Cube guide and tutorial on my YouTube. I'll put a link to that in the info section of this video. That way you guys have a quick reference point to figure out exactly how the Kanai's Cube functions. But for this video we're not going to go over it. So as far as the weapon slot goes, we're running a Star Metal Kukri which is going to give us pretty much permanent Big Bad Voodoo. Tons more damage and a lot more attack speed as well which means we're going to be uh, stunning with Snake to the Face more, we're going to get more life back with the secondary of Simplicity Strength and things of that nature as well. Really, really powerful. Mask of Jerum in the equipment slot for 100% more pet damage. So all of our fetishes, pretty insane. And then we're able to run a Ring of Royal Grandeur in the jewelry slot, which brings us right over to the gear. Because of this, we're able to now run Focus and Restraint in our uh, ring slots over here. Now... This is really easy to proc in a Carnival build in the first place because obviously we're running Poison Dart, which is going to proc one half of the Focus Restraint combo, and then Grasp of the Dead and Piranhas will proc the other half. So that's a huge, huge damage buff there as well. So let's go ahead and go into it. So Focus there, Crit Damage, Crit Chance, Intelligence, and a Socket. You could also uh, roll the main stat off of these for attack speed potentially. Same over here, pretty much the same setup. Then we've got Lacoonies with Poison Damage, Attack Speed, Crit Chance, Movement Speed. Currently this is just the best amulet that I have. I ideally you're going to have either the Hellfire Amulet or the S of Johan are the two that you really want to look out for. Some Immunity Amulets would be fine too, potentially. The Carnival, which is pretty much what makes the build run. We're running Pauldrons of the Skeleton King to potentially get a, another Second Life ability. Uh, aside from Spirit Vessel, which is quite good, especially when you're really trying to push high level content and you're getting one shot by most things anyways. This tends to be a pretty glass cannon build, so you kind of just build all damage and then you want to rely on this and Spirit Vessel to really keep you alive and just try not to get hit by anything if you can really help it, which obviously that doesn't always end up that way, but you try to avoid the majority of things. And we've got a Wishing Hour here. 
We want to roll poison dart damage on that. Then we got the dagger of darts, which ideally you want to have one that has 7 attack speed, 10% weapon damage. But that's easier said than done. You have to basically get an ancient one that naturally rolls either stat. And then you can roll the other one on it to it and then Ramalandi's it. That brings us to the Zuni pieces. So we have the Zuni gloves, trifecta, attack speed, crit damage, crit chance. The Zuni chest, you want to make sure you have fetish army damage on that. The Zuni pants, you want to make sure you get poison dart damage on these. Zuni trail. And then the Zuni string with fetish army and elite damage there. Now, if this naturally rolls the elite damage, you're able to re-roll the fetish army damage to 15% poison dart damage, which is going to be a little bit of a damage increase, but only if it naturally rolls the elite damage. If it does not, you want to keep the fetish army damage and roll whatever bad stat you have on this to the elite damage. So as far as legendary gems go, we've got the Bane of the Trapped, and the Simplicity Strength, these are both pretty much staples in the build. The third gem, you can kind of decide which one you like better, in my opinion. Uh, you can either go Gogok of Swiftness for more attack speed and CDR, or you can go with the Enforcer here for more pet damage. And then we've got a CDR gem in the helmet. As far as Paragon points go, get as much movement speed as you need in core, and then go main stat. Offense-wise, crit chance, crit damage, attack speed, then CDR. Defense, Armor percentage, life percentage, all res, life regen. You could go all res before the life percentage if you wanted to. And then utility, none of this really matters all that much. You probably want to go the life on hit first, though, in this build. And then the rest of it is just whatever you want to do. Probably resource cost reduction, then area damage, gold find. I personally like the Enchantress the best for Carnival. I think the majority of people do. You want the Follower Can't Die token. I like the Unjeng Do on her. Attacking enemies below 25% life freezes them for 3 seconds. Really good on bosses and elites and champions. The S of Johan to pull things together. The Word Ward for extra stuns. And you want to make sure you reroll your Unjeng Do to lightning damage to actually proc this. And then an Oculus Ring so you get a potential extra damage increase in a ring on the ground if she's able to actually land a killing blow. And then for her abilities, the charm here. Powered Armor, Erosion, and then I like Focused Mind, but you could also go with the Mass Control for more crowd control if that's what you want to do. Alright guys, we're going to run a Greater Rift, mainly so you can see the damage numbers more than anything else. Keep in mind that right now in the PTR, there's the Carnival Bug again, where your fetishes randomly will stop shooting darts, and you have to port back to town to reset them and then go back into the game. So you may see me do that a couple times. And also keep in mind that Conduit currently is very, very overtuned and uh, just does a ton of damage and lasts a really long time as well. So, But this will still give you a, a rough idea of how much damage this build can do. And you saw my gear, it's really not that good. My Dagger of Darts isn't great and I don't have even full Ancients and my Legendary Gems aren't that high of a rank even. But you'll see some crazy numbers here and... Uh, give you a good idea of what the meta is going to be like in patch 2.3 for this build. So anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did, and I will see you next time.
I must wait longer. Need help? That creature must die. Stop waiting yet. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. 